Hi, welcome. This is Clemens at the Elector. In this video, we will talk a little bit about uh, home automation. You know, I've often thought about uh, automating my home, but uh, I never undertook more than uh, buying a few of these smart plugs. Um, I've also built uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi uh, devices, but I never went so far as to connect them together to create a home automation system. The reason was always that it seemed way too much work to create a communication system uh, to connect everything together, uh, just for automating the few things that I would like to automate. The other day I had some time and I thought I could spend it on studying a few of these smart plugs and relay boards that I had lying around and for which I had lost uh, the user manual. And uh, doing so I came across interesting open source projects like uh, ESPurna, or ESPurna and um, ESP Home. And these projects led me in turn to a Home Assistant. And suddenly home automation seems uh, possible without too much effort and so I started experimenting. It all starts by installing ESP Home on a computer. For this you will need uh, Python, uh, so if you don't have Python, install that first. Which version of Python you need is not specified, uh, I used Python 3.8. But if you look at the GitHub repository of ESP Home, then you will see that Python 2 is no longer supported. After the installation, the guide suggests you run the uh, wizard to help you create a firmware configuration file. The wizard is supposed to produce a YAML file, but for me it uh, generated a JSON file instead. This JSON file uh, turned out to be unusable, and so I had to create my own YAML file. Now this seems easy enough, as a YAML file is just a text file with some uh, parameters in it, but it's uh, rather hard to find out uh, what has to be in it and what is optional. YAML stands for YAML Ain't a Markup Language. A YAML file is a list of keys and values, and uh, keys and values can be nested. Like Python, it uses indentation to structure the file. Our ESP Home YAML file was to start with an ESP Home section or key that specifies the name of the device, the platform of the device, and the ESP board or module to use. Then you need a Wi Fi key to specify the SSID and the password of your network. Note that you can also do this in a secure way, but for now we just want to connect our device to our HESIO system. To enable our ESP Home device to connect to HESIO, you have to specify the API key. The key can remain empty, but if you don't specify the key, the firmware will not include the HESIO API, and your device cannot connect to the system. Another key you want is the OTA key. Like the API key, it can remain empty, but if you don't specify it, your device will not have over-the-air or OTA programming capabilities. Finally, a useful key to have is the login key. Again, it can remain empty, but if you don't specify it, you will not be able to see debug messages. And we will use this feature later on. The next step is to configure the ESP Home firmware for our desktop thermostat. For this, we have to create a list of keys and values that describe the components that are on our board. The thermostat has two push buttons, three LEDs, a relay, and you can connect a DS18B20 Dallas one wire temperature sensor to it. One of the LEDs is connected in parallel with the relay, so we have two controllable LEDs, one relay LED combination, and a temperature sensor giving our device six components. In ESP Home terminology, our device has two binary sensors, the push buttons, three switches, the LEDs and the relay, and a Dallas. A Dallas refers to the temperature sensor, which was originally manufactured by Dallas. For each component, you must at least specify the platform, a pin number, and the name. The binary sensors and the switches are all of the GPIO platform type, and the Dallas component is a platform in itself and only needs a pin number. A binary sensor, like a push button, may need a pull up resistor and it may be necessary to invert its signal. You can specify this by adding key value pairs to the pin key. When the YAML file is ready, you can upload the ESP Home firmware to your ESP module. For this, connect the module with a USB to serial cable to a computer and put it in programming mode. On the desktop thermostat, you do this by pressing reset. Then you press the flash button while you keep reset pressed. You release the reset button and then you release the flash button. A blue LED will flash on the ESP module. When programming is finished, when nothing is happening anymore in the command line interface, you have to reset the thermostat. Press the reset button, but don't press any keys in the command line. Now logging should start and canal messages will fly by. Look carefully until you see the Dallas component. 
If all went well, you should now also see a 16 digit hexadecimal number. This is the address of your DS18B20 sensor. If you add this address to your YAML file, you can uh, connect multiple uh, DS18B20 sensors to your device. Uh, to do so, you uh, add a sensor key to your YAML file with uh, Dallas as a platform. So now you see, if you forgot to specify the logging key in your YAML file, you would never have seen this message. Note that every time you modify your YAML file, you have to reprogram your device. Ok, that's it. In this video I have shown you how to install a Home Assistant and how to set up ESP Home devices for use with HasIO. I hope you found it interesting and thank you for watching.